using FA70 one and stable. Um, been doing a little bit more activity than I wanted to and took seven units for a fairly heavy carb meal, but probably should have backed off a little bit because of the activity and I've been drinking some juice and it seems to be leveling off now fine. Just a few extra carbs to kind of stable it out, but I am totally comfortable with letting my blood sugar cruise at that level. It is healthy. I'm not shaking. I'm not sweaty. I don't feel anxious, nervous. Um, I did do a finger stick and I was 76 and because I had active insulin in my body, I took about a half of a juice box. So that should bump me up into the 90s to 100. So that should keep me up enough to clean my house after I film this video. So anyways, let's jump into today's video. Hey everyone, it's Maddie. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. And as you can tell by the title of today's video, like Friday's video, we're going to be delving into different types of um, insulin and what they kind of do um, and kind of how they work, their action times, how long they last, what the different kinds are. Now, I could spend hours and hours and hours delving into these different things, but I'm going to give you guys some basics. And most of this stuff really only applies for people that are on MDIs. However, if you're on an insulin pump, you typically only use rapid acting insulin like Humalog, Novolog, or Apedra. But again, I'll talk about more of that as we delve into uh, this video. In terms of insulin, there is inhaled insulin, which I'm not going to talk about too much, but that is a rapid acting insulin. It's called Afresa. Instead of you giving yourself an injection, you take um, a device and inhale your insulin to get really rapid drops or to bolus for meals that are super high carb. Again, I don't know much about the inhaled insulin only because I've never tried it, but from people that I have seen use it, they've had pretty good results about getting stubborn highs down or bolusing for foods um, that are really hard to cover. Um, there's even Fiasp, which I don't know a lot about either, but that's an injected insulin uh, that apparently works super rapid acting that it starts working in five or 10 minutes versus 15 to 20 for your typical rapids. Um, but anyways, um, that's all I really know about that kind. There is long acting insulin, which is designed for stability and keeping blood sugars kind of um, steady and stable in between meals or when you are asleep. There is short acting insulin, which is like your regular insulins that are really good for people that are do low carb um, or eat heavy protein meals. And then there is your intermediate insulin like NPH. I don't know much about that, but I definitely know that was used a lot before we had long acting insulin. Um, it was kind of taken a couple times a day to kind of mirror a long acting insulin, but it has more peaks than typical long acting insulins on the market now. So I don't think it's used a lot unless you really absolutely are desperate for insulin and you go to Walmart. Um, I think Walmart insulin is the regular human insulin and intermediate insulin or uh, Humulin R, Humulin N. Um, the R insulins are short, the N insulins are intermediate, like NPH. And then the other category is rapid, which most of you are familiar with. That is your rapid acting insulins like Novolog, Humulog, and Apedra, and you can even include Afresa and Fiasp in that um, category. They start working pretty rapidly after injection and they don't work for very long. Um, they're kind of in and out and their job is done. So that's why they are the most appropriate choice for bolusing for meals and taking corrections because they work so quickly and they work really hard, really fast, and then they get out of your body, um, which is pretty amazing to me how we have so many different insulins and how they work in your body is amazing. Kind of how you can kind of pick and choose what works best for you. So uh, I have a chart here and I'm going to kind of guide you guys through this, but I have obviously long, short, intermediate, and rapid. I'm going to start with long acting insulin first. Um, this GIR is the glucose infusion rate. So this is like as more glucose enters your bloodstream, this is kind of how the insulin is going to respond to that. Same with here in the short, intermediate, and the rapid acting. So your long acting insulins include Lebomir. Lantus, Basaglar, Basaglar and Lantus are the same thing. I take Basaglar, that is insulin glargine. Levomir is a different type of insulin called insulin detamir. And then there is Traceba, which is another long acting, which I don't have drawn on here. Um, but that is, I think that's a fairly new insulin. I don't think it's like super new, but um, it's more long acting than the long actings on the market. Um, but I would say most of you watching, if you are on multiple daily injections, either take Lantus, Basaglar, or Levomir. Um, some of you probably take Traceba, which is cool too. Um, you got to kind of find what one works for you. Again, insurance companies are going to cover different insulins differently. Um, mine covers Lantus and Basaglar the same. However, just because I've stuck with Humalog, it's just been easier to stay in the Lily family. So I've been 
using I think I used Lantis Solo Star in the hospital the first three days I was there, but I then they put me on Basaglar, which is the same thing as Lantis, so I always call it my Lantis. And by the time this video is going up, I will no longer be taking Lantis. Um, I am having to stop my Glargine dose the night before I go in for my pump training, so I have no long acting um, no long acting insulin inside my body because when you're on a pump, you do have basal insulin in the form of the Humalog, but it's just dumped in microscopic doses. Um, so it, it, you don't have to worry about taking long acting insulin anymore, but long acting insulin, as you, as you can see, are kind of designed to start working pretty slowly. They have a little bit of a peak as to when they really are working their most. Looks like typically for most long acting insulins, like Levamir here is in red and your Lantus Basaglar is in black. They typically start working, looks like five to six hours, um, after you start injecting really, really well. Um, sometimes I notice that is the case for me because sometimes, say I eat my dinner at like 6 o'clock at night. So that's my last Humalog dose I take for the most part. I take my long-acting Lantus before I go to sleep at about 9.45, 10 o'clock, or when I'm starting to wind down and go to sleep. Well, by 11 o'clock or midnight, sometimes I notice my blood sugar will go up to like 140 or 150. Well, to me, that's high, so I take a half a unit of Humalog. Well, what I'm actually doing is covering the time from when this um, long-acting uh, Glargine or Lantus is starting to work. Um, I'm kind of covering that time where there's really no insulin present in my body with that Humalog to kind of hold me over until the Basaglar will kick in and keep me steady through the night and through the rest of the day. Um, so like I said, they peak at about, you know, they, they really don't have peaks. Long-acting insulins are not designed to have peaks, but you can see where they're starting to work really good at five to six hours. And then as you get closer and closer to that 18 to 21 hour mark, they start tapering off. So this is why some people also split their basal dose. Um, I've noticed this more when I'm insulin resistant or on my period, for example. Um, by 3 o'clock in the afternoon, that's approximately 17 to 18 hours after my Lantus dose, that it'll kind of wear off. Or my blood sugar will randomly head up to 160 and I'm going, I'm sitting down, haven't ate anything, I'm drinking plenty of water, I'm not stressed. There's nothing really that I can think of off the top of my head that would cause my blood sugar to randomly go up. Well, it could be because my Lantus is starting to wear off at that point and it's starting to um, not do its job properly. So I have to combat with uh, the Humalog a little bit. If I was staying on multiple daily injections, I definitely would consider splitting my basal dose and doing a certain amount at night and then doing another partial dose during the afternoon or the day. Um, however, because I'm switching to an insulin pump, this really won't be necessary. Um, Traceba, I definitely know, I've heard a lot of good things about Traceba. It doesn't have a, as much of a peak or as a faster on, or that kind of that slope like you're seeing in here that Lantus and Levamir uh, present. It's, it's very much more even keel and it actually can stay in your body for up to 48 hours instead of 24. Um, I know Levamir sometimes will be done at about 18 to 19 hours. Um, but if you are pregnant or thinking about becoming pregnant and you're on multiple daily injections, that is the, one of the first things they asked me when I first um, was getting uh, seeing an endocrinologist for type 1 diabetes. One of the first questions I was asked was, am I trying to get pregnant or am I pregnant? And if the answer to that was yes, they would have switched my long acting to Levamir because that is the only safe long acting insulin right now on the market that is safe for pregnancy and fetal development. So keep that in mind. Um, but like I said, long acting insulins are usually, they're all pretty much the same except Traceba is one of the newer ones that lasts a little longer, doesn't have as many peaks, less likely for lows, it keeps you more stable. Again, it, it's going to be dependent on your preference, your insurance company, but I can tell you if you switch my long acting insulin now, I'll find a way to work around it and find it to work best for me if I was switched to Levamir or Traceba and that's the only long acting insulin I could get covered if I was still on injections, I would find a way to make it work. Um, because obviously different long acting insulins are going to respond differently to, um, in different, differently in different people's bodies. So now we're going to look at regular human insulin. This is the stuff that they typically dump in you when you're in the hospital in DKA. This is the insulin that a lot of low carbers use or people that follow Dr. Bernstein's regimen. There's also people that if they cannot afford the rapid acting insulin will use regular insulin. However, regular insulin takes quite a while for it to peak action time wise. It's probably between four to six hours and by 12 hours, it's completely out of your system. Um, so things like regular human insulin, Humalin R, Novalin R, I would only really use that if I was eating super low carb um, or 
Um, I might even invest in it if I wanted to go on a streak where I wanted to eat very protein based um, and use that long acting to kind of or that short acting insulin to kind of cover the protein because of it can mirror better how the protein gets broken down in your body because protein gets broken slow, slower in your body than regular carbohydrates. Um, it is broken down by a process called gluconeogenesis, a very long word, but it basically means that your body will convert protein to glucose to use as energy. Um, if you don't have enough carbohydrates in your system or if you eat a very heavy protein diet and very low carb, this might be a better choice for you. Um, I know in a pinch it works okay, but it doesn't really do good for a typical American diet or if you eat carbohydrates regularly like myself. Again, I'm going to talk more about how I view diet and type 1 diabetes. Um, but a basic rundown is that I do believe in eating low glycemic. However, I'm not going to deprive myself of things that I love and enjoy. If I want a piece of cake, I'm going to eat that piece of cake. And I'm going to bolus for it. I'm going to pre-bolus for it. And I'm going to give enough insulin up front. I'm going to watch my blood sugar. It starts going above 140. I'm going to smack her again with another half a unit or a unit. And it'll usually level right off. Um, it's, it's, it's how you time your insulin and how you know how your body responds to different foods is what makes the key. Um, but short-acting insulin is not really a bad thing. I mean, I've only had it in my body when I was in the hospital. Haven't really injected with it since, but if you're a low carber or you follow Dr. Bernstein's protocol or eat a lot of protein, or even for me, like say I go out to a restaurant and I want to use regular human insulin or regular rapid insulin from my pump and then I decide to eat a very big steak and I don't know how I'm going to cover it, maybe I'd invest in some Humulin R from Walmart or something for 25 bucks a vial and take a few units or whatever the unit to protein coverage is. For me and cover that with the regular in uh, human insulin and just see how that works it's something i might try in the future not nothing immediately but something to think about then there's intermediate i don't know a lot about intermediate acting insulin but the only example i have on here is nph but also humulin n and novolin n also fall into the intermediate category um it starts working within eight to nine hours at its peak um uh, its peak time is eight to nine hours after and then it'll start tapering off after 18 hours. As you can see, it's pretty easy to see by my graphs where the highest point is or the climax of each graph is where um, the insulin is working at its hardest and its fastest and its best. Um, but you can see most insulins will stay in your body for at least, um, except rapid, most insulins will stay in your body for at least 12 to 18 hours. So um, I, the only thing I do know about intermediate acting insulin is from hearing from some of you guys um, that it was kind of used as a long acting before long acting came out. Um, that when they only had like regular human insulin and NPH, um, you would take your NPH dose or doses to kind of cover um, basal insulin um, because it's not quite as drastic as the regular, um, but obviously it's not as gentle as long acting. So it was kind of the best form of long acting they had back then. Um, if some of you still use it, let me know. I think it's rather fascinating that if you still use this and get success out of it, great, good for you. And if it works for you, great. And again, if you were in a pinch and you need to go to Walmart and get the N, the Humulin N or the Novolin N, remember R is the short acting and N is more of your NPH or kind of mimicking a long acting, I guess you could say in a way. Um, is uh, The N's are like an NPH. Let me know how it kind of works for you. I'm kind of curious more. Um, but that's kind of how NPH works. It's kind of designed to be like a long acting because if you honestly think about it, it starts working its hardest at that nine or 10 hour mark. So I could see why people used to use this as long acting or this was the only option because you would take a shot probably every nine or 10 hours and that will cover you almost that 24 hour period to where you're getting kind of a basal insulin. And then we're gonna talk about the final insulin which most of you are very, very familiar with if you are using rapid acting insulin. This is used for heavy carb meals, correcting high, high blood sugars, or if you're on an insulin pump, you are getting rapid acting insulin continuously infused in your body in the form of microscopic basal doses and as bolus, regular bolus doses that we're all used to. Um, here it is. It works pretty quickly. Um, within 15 minutes, I know it starts to work, but it really starts working really, really well at uh, one, one and a half to two hours after and then once you start getting three to six hours past, it's pretty much out of your body. Now, I mentioned that I'm going to have to stop my glargine dose. So how in the heck am I going to keep my sugars regulated as best as possible until I get on my insulin pump at 9 o'clock in the morning next week, Monday? 
Well, I was told to every three hours give myself a correction with Humalog, and that means I'm going to have to get up every three hours in the middle of the night, set alarms, set timers, um, so that I can proactively keep my blood sugars as stable as possible and as healthy as possible with Humalog. Um, this is also something you would do if your pump fails and you're getting a new pump sent to you and it's only going to be a day. Don't bother taking out that long acting. Just keep injecting yourself every three hours with rapid acting and it'll kind of act like long acting too. It's designed to cover and leave, cover and leave so that you're, you're kind of getting that consist consistency with um, your insulin. So what are rapid acting insulins? Like Lyspro, which is Humalog. There is Aspart, which is Novolog and Gilseline, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. That is um, a Pedra. Those are the main rapid acting insulins we use. Um, and typically, if you're eating foods um, high in carb, or if you found out like me that pre-bolusing helps prevent your spikes, you typically want to wait 20 to 30 minutes um, because that's when that rapid acting insulin is going to start entering that bloodstream and start working. So if you get that insulin a little bit of a lead to the carbs to match up, you're going to flatline really, really nice. Um, or your spike isn't going to be as drastic. You may go up to 140 or 150 and nicely come down. Instead of taking your injection eating, you might skyrocket to 170, 180, 200, and then crash down. I find that pre-bolusing helps me keep more stable blood sugars, prevents nasty spikes, allows the insulin to get in first, keeps healthier blood sugars. You get the point here. So, um, if you are on multiple daily injections, most likely you probably use basal bolus method, which is, I believe, what Dr. Bernstein came up with. So you probably use some form of rapid-acting insulin or short-acting insulin in combination with a long-acting insulin, like Levamir, Basaglar, Lantis, or Traceba. Um, as of right now, I am on the Basaglar and Humalog covering. So the idea is that you have stable blood sugars with this one in between meals and to aid with boluses. And this one is specifically th these two or whatever one you use, are specifically designed to cover your meals um, and your high blood sugars. Like I said, the only thing I didn't talk about was mixed um, insulins, like Novolin 7030, which usually they're a combination between a rapid and a short, or maybe a rapid and an intermediate insulin. Um, they're kind of mixed, where their certain percent is, is rapid or short, and another percent is like an uh, intermediate insulin. Um, I don't know much about those because I've never taken them, but those are really good, um, too, if you, that's the only thing you have access to, or it works better for your body, great. Again, find what works for you, find what your doctor recommends, find what works good for your lifestyle, because not everybody needs the same kind of insulin dosing, um, but if you're a type 1 diabetic, you definitely, um, need some sort of basal insulin, whether you get that in the form of rapid acting from a pump, or you get it from a long acting insulin like Levamir, Traceva, or Lantus, or Basiglar. And then if you um, if you are a type 1 diabetic after you get past your honeymoon, um, or whatever the case may be, or you start uh, having to take insulin for meals, you will be put on either short or rapid-acting insulin, and your doses will probably go up. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Feel free to hit that subscribe button down below. I post videos every single week about diabetes plus more. Um, and stay tuned for more videos about the Omnipod vlogs. Um, this video is going up on Sunday, so by tomorrow I will be starting my insulin pump, so wish me luck. Um, I'm excited but nervous at the same time. I know I'm going to be fine. It's all going to be good. I'm not looking forward to waking up every three hours and having to inject myself with Humalog. However, I know that they're scheduling me for the morning and fairly quickly I won't have to worry about doing that after they get basal insulin pumping in me or a basal rate pumping in me. I won't have to worry too much uh, about correcting afterwards with that. So until next week for more videos, take care, God bless, be kind, spread positivity, and be thankful. Bye everyone.